Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Mikkel. I am a digital nomad and online entrepreneur. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you one of my all-time favorite places in all of Europe, and that is Croatia. Sharing a bit about transportation, budgeting, accommodation, safety, and what to really expect in this location as a digital nomad. So over the past three years, I have had an opportunity to spend about seven months in total. So I've gone all the way from the top of Istria, going all the way down to Dubrovnik, and I've also hit about five different islands. So today I'm gonna be highlighting Split and Zagreb as those are my two favorite places to digital nomad. I will link below some additional videos about Dubrovnik, Istria, and some of the islands. Now, getting into Croatia as a whole. So as far as getting there, I've noticed, especially if you're coming from the US or other parts of Europe, it is generally more affordable to either fly from London or to fly from Spain. So I will usually take a flight and then once arriving, it's quite easy to get around. Now in Croatia, they don't really have like a massive train system or metro. However, they do have buses running all the time and they are quite affordable. Now, as far as getting around internally in the cities, you are gonna be able to find Bolt and Uber. Usually Bolt is gonna be a bit cheaper and depending on the duration of the ride, usually about a 10, 15 minute ride will only cost you about four to five euros in both cities. Um, this gives you a good idea of what it costs to kind of get around in like a private type of car. Now in Zagreb, you will have um, a street car. However, they don't really have anything else like that in the rest of Croatia. So kind of divulging a bit into where to stay in Croatia and where I recommend. Well, it really comes down to the season. So Croatia is the type of place that essentially um, end of September through the beginning of March everyone goes north and goes up to Zagreb. So you're gonna see many places on the coast um, close. For example, if you're in any of the islands, Dubrovnik, Istria, all of those coastal locations are generally gonna close in this time and you're gonna have about 25% of things being open. So this kind of plays into why I go where I do when I do. So like I mentioned, um, the best time to be in Split, it's gonna be essentially June through the beginning of September. However, my favorite time to be in Split is actually going to be April through mid-June. Now, the reason that is, is there's just less tourists and it is a bit more affordable during that time. And then I do like to pop back in, usually end of September and stay till about the end of October and then head up to Zagreb. Now, one of the main reasons that I keep coming back to Croatia and something, no matter what city you're in, is the safety. So it is a very, very safe place. Over the past seven months, I've never ran into any issues or felt uncomfortable. It's really easy to ask people for directions and generally almost everyone speaks English. And this makes it really easy to get around and people are always willing to help you. So transitioning into split a bit more. So finding accommodation in split can actually be quite hard. I found this out when I was trying to go for the digital nomad visa. Now, if you don't know much about the digital nomad visa in Croatia, I will link some additional information about that below. However, because the locals there make so much money during the tourist season, it makes it quite hard to find a place to stay. Now, the prices that I'm gonna be sharing with you is gonna be anything that is walking distance to the old town. So if you do go to a shoulder city or even are willing to drive like 20 minutes outside the city, you are gonna see quite a significant dip in the price. Um, just because anytime you're near the old town or a main city in Croatia, it is going to cost a bit more. So during the off season, generally I was paying about 250 to 400 euros a week for housing. Now how I would find my housing would generally be through booking.com. For some reason, this does tend to be the most affordable option in Croatia. Now there is Facebook groups and stuff that you can use, but I found that booking.com booking has been really great for me. And 
and really simple to use. Um, Airbnb does tend to be slightly more. However, I would check both out. Now, if you are going during the on season, you are going to see quite a significant um, increase in price. So you're generally going to be paying about $450 to $750 a week. Now, the prices that I'm sharing with you are for a general one bedroom apartment or a studio apartment. With that being said, it is a lot harder to find a one bedroom apartment since a lot of the apartments in Split are gonna be quite smaller and are gonna be studios. So if you are wanting to have a bit more space, you are definitely going to have to pay for it. Another good way to kind of lower this price is if you're able to have a friend um, stay with you or two of you are splitting it, it does make it quite a bit more affordable. Now getting into meals. So like the housing is a bit more expensive, also the food is gonna be a bit more expensive. I would say for an average meal out you're looking at spending an average between 15 to 25 euros and if you're going to a really nice restaurant you're looking at more around 30 to 50 euros now a typical drink is going to cost you about six to eight euros and if you're sitting right on the waterfront you may end up paying at 10 or 12. Now, a great way to kind of lower the cost um, in split in general is definitely buying groceries. I think it's very manageable to be able to eat all your food from the grocery store and only it costs you about five to 10 euros a day. Now, when it comes to the Wi-Fi, I'd be lying if I told you that the Wi-Fi has been totally seamless. In reality, especially when it comes to being closer to the coast, sometimes the Wi-Fi can be a bit iffy. So they do have the capability of having really fast Wi-Fi. It's just something that you should definitely check with your host about. So um, maybe asking them the Wi-Fi speed, but generally anywhere in the town will have Wi-Fi. Now, while working in uh, Split, one of my favorite things to do is to go to the cafes. Now, because it is such a iconic tourist destination, it does have minimal cafes that are just digital nomads. I'd say there's about two of them that you will consistently find people working in. However, there is about five that I generally rotate through um, that will have people coming in and join a coffee, but I've also found them really good for working. So so I will go ahead and link those below. Now, the other thing that I really love about Split is just how close it is to the coast, how easy it is to go to the beach, and how nice it is to be able to check out some of the islands. You're only an hour ferry ride from Bowl and Tavar, as well as um, even little smaller islands in between there. And I will have another video kind of talking about my favorite things to do in those islands. But overall, Split is a really great place um, for digital nomads and somewhere I really recommend um, and would definitely go to um, kind of in those shoulder seasons. Even though the summer is nice, just for me, it is very, very hot there. Now, transitioning into Zagreb. So generally when I go to Zagreb, I stay in the lower part of the city and or the upper part of the city. Reason being, it's just so close to so many parks and cafes. Now, the pricing in Zagreb is going to be quite a bit less. However, over the past two years, I have seen the housing increase quite a bit. Um, like for example, when I started going about two years ago, it was significantly less and it is starting to creep up to that level in which split is on. So during the off season, so this is gonna be any time during those summer months, you're gonna generally be paying around 150 to 300 euros a week. And then during the on season, which would be October through, I would say the end of March, you're gonna be looking at spending around two to 450 dollars. 50 euros a week. Now, of course, if you do venture out about a 10 minute drive outside of Zagreb, the prices are going to drop a lot. However, I think the beauty of being in this city is definitely the convenience of being in it. To kind of just start off with the food. So the food is gonna be quite a bit more affordable than what you would see in Split. So for a typical meal, I was usually paying about seven to 15 euros for a meal. A drink was costing me about five to seven euros. And then you could definitely get by on the groceries paying about three to six euros a day. And the coffee in general is quite a bit more affordable. It's quite easy to get a coffee for a dollar fifty or even um, two euros. Now, kind of transitioning into the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi the Wi overall is better in Zagreb. I think this is because 
Um, that is where all the companies are, all of the big companies that are in Croatia are in Zagreb. So I've never personally ran into issues with the Wi-Fi in my Airbnbs. And a lot of the cafes do have Wi-Fi. And as far as cafes go, I think that is the best thing about being in Zagreb, um, beyond it being a really small, um, nice, clean city, is the cafe scene. For example, over a course over two weeks, I went to eight different cafes and they were all amazing. And there's still more cafes that I'm discovering in Zagreb that I love working in. So I will link below um, more about my favorite cafes and where are good for digital nomads. But there tends to be quite more of a permanent digital nomad scene there. And I think this has to do with people that are generally going for the digital nomad visa. It's a lot easier to find a year long lease in Zagreb just because people that are living in Zagreb, it's not really the main iconic tourist destination. Now, the last thing that I wanted to touch on is Dubrovnik. So I'm sure you've heard of Dubrovnik. It is home to where they shot Game of Thrones. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a good digital nomad destination. Reason being, it is quite expensive and um, it is constantly full of tourists. So it really makes it hard to meet other digital nomads and really get a like home feeling while there. The other area that people love to check out in Croatia is going to be that Istria region. So that's going to be in North Croatia. You're going to have Pula, Ravine, all of those little cities up in the north. And I do think it is a quite nice area. And if you're definitely um, a digital nomad with a family or a significant other, I think this is a great option. However, as more of a solo traveler, I did find this location to be a bit of a slower place and a bit more boring. So I didn't want to stay there super long term however depending on where you are you're going to see around the same prices that you would be paying in split and sometimes significantly less so in conclusion to kind of tie this all together i think croatia is a great location for digital nomads and is a super super safe place especially if you are a female and you are new to digital nomading or are doing solo traveling and not where to start i think croatia is a really good option especially because you're not going to really have that language barrier as much of an issue there and um, people are just so willing to help and like i said i'm going to link below um, additional information about croatia and more detailed videos going into other cities. If you have any questions um, about an area or when you should go, just go ahead and put them in the comments and I will be replying to them. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and more of my favorite digital nomad locations. See you guys.